Hello all my truth seekers, my name is Keisha and I welcome you to the truth show. In this video I will explain the actor Shia LaBeouf, Dark Pass. When I made a video about him years ago, I had no knowledge of his dark and disturbing past. I am surprised Sean Combs and he are not buddies because they have so much in common. Now you all know I like to give a brief intro before I go in deep, so here we go. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. Here we go again. I mean, this is the truth show, oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I mean, this is the truth show. Oh, yes. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Okay, before I dive deep into, well, you know what? Here's a preview of the video I did before about Shia I always wanted to do a video by Shia LaBeouf. Why? Because I'm a huge fan and the latest events has me worried. Now, before I get in depth about Shia, here's a brief recap about him, just in case some of you don't know him. Shia, whose first name is derived from the Hebrew Shia, meaning gift of God, was born in Los Angeles, California on June 11th, 1986. He's the only child of Shana and Jeffrey Craig LaBeouf. His mother is Jewish and his father, who is it? Cajun descent and Christian, who Shai has described as hippies, but his father, especially being described as tough as nails, he he also attended the alcoholic anonymous class with his dad, and because his dad was an alcoholic, he used to verbally and mentally abuse Shai while growing up. Meanwhile, because of his dad drinking, his mother and dad divorced, and that left his mother to take care of the bills. She wasn't able to for long, so she sent Shai to live with his uncle. Now, as a way for him to deal with his parents' issues, he used to mimic his father, you know, and make people laugh. You see, Shai used, used his imagination like many only children to the parents does. My daughter has a vivid imagination as well. She's the only child, too. Anyway, his talents led him to go to 32nd Street Visual and Performing Arts Magnet in Los Angeles and Alexander Hamilton High School. Although he received most of his education from tutors, though because his acting picked up. You see, Shia is an American actor, performance artist, and a filmmaker, okay? Although at the time he became known among young, younger audiences as Louis Stevens in a Disney Channel series, Even Stevens, a role from which LaBeouf received the Young Artist Award nomination in 2001 and won a Daytime Emmy Award in 2003. He also made his film debut in the Christmas Path movie in 2004. He made later, he did like a, a, a directorials um, starring American rappers Cage and Kid Cudi. Probably butchered that last name like I butchered a lot of names, but who cares? Anyway, also in 2007, LaBeouf starred in one of my favorite movies, Disturbia, mm -hmm. and Serves Up. Then later he cast it in another one of my favorite movies, Transformers, and as Sam Whitwicky, Whitwicky, something like that. At the main character, he was the main character of the movie. Shia later appeared in another one of my favorite movie series. <laughs> I'm, I'm old school, okay. <laughs> Whereas he played Henry Mutt William Jones III in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which I just got through watching last night, by the way, <laughs> which was the fourth film in Indiana Jones franchise, and so on and so forth with that. Due to my negligence, I didn't go that deeply. I let my fascination with Mr. LaBeouf overshine the truth about him. I'm ashamed because I'm usually fair, but this time I wasn't. I would never let that slip again. I'm apologizing in advance. Take a look at this. You know how people often say that they can separate the artist from the art? Shia LaBeouf is one of those artists whose talent will never catch up to how truly dark and destructive and disturbing his past is. Considering that FKA Twix and Shia are finally going to trial in October of this year for his alleged abuse of her, I thought we could go over the details of the lawsuit, their history, as well as Shia's very dark past. 
because in my opinion, I don't believe FKA was the first and I don't believe she was the last. So like I always say, everything I'm about to say is alleged. You don't have to believe me because I am just some bitch on the internet and this is all public information. So FKA Twigs is a singer-songwriter from the UK. She has a beautiful, ethereal voice. Her and Shia met in 2018 on the set of his movie, Honey Boy. They began dating just a year later. In late 2020, she goes on to file a lawsuit against Shia for alleged schmexual battery, assault, and infliction of emotional distress. According to Twigs, Shia LaBeouf forced her to sleep without any clothes on every single day because if she didn't, she was keeping herself from him. She alleges that he always wanted her to make herself available to him. She says Shia would tell her she was disgusting and vile. She alleges Shia knowingly gave her an STD, something he would later confirm. Allegedly, Shia would violently attack her while she was asleep. She would wake up to him, you know, preventing her from breathing with his hands. Allegedly, Shia did not like when she spoke to or looked at male waiters, so she learned very early on that anytime a male was speaking to her, she would just keep her eyes down and like just look at the floor. She alleges he had a minimum amount of times that he required that she kiss him or touch him every single day, and if she did not meet that minimum requirement, he would blow up, he would cause a scene, he would scold her. There's so much more about his behavior in general and how scary it was. She even talks about how to get ready for like certain movie roles, he would go out and like pew pew stray dogs. Now this just brings me back to when I talked about the really disturbing link between method acting and these really terrible abusive men in Hollywood like Jared Leto and James Franco. I think I talked about this in the James Franco video. Twigs alleges that she thought she would not be taken seriously if she went to the police and she also feared ruining his career. Crazy enough, Sia hears about the lawsuit and she comes forward with her experience with Shia. Now, if y'all remember, he actually stars in the music video for Sia's song, Elastic Heart, I believe. It's actually my favorite Sia song and it's a great music video. But she says that she felt conned into a relationship with him because at the time that he was dating Twigs, he led her to believe he was single. Sia saying, and I quote, that she has been hurt emotionally by Shia and that she believes he's a pathological liar and that he's very sick. Another one of Shia's exes comes forward. She was actually part of the lawsuit. She made a statement in it. Her name is Carolyn Fuzz. She's a costume designer. And she says that Shia also did not let her look at or speak to male waiters. And she says that one time he headbutted her so hard that she bled. Shia is asked to make a statement and in an email, he says that a lot of the allegations are not true, but that he owed these women the space to share their experience. But then his lawyers quickly thereafter deny every single allegation saying that Twigs benefited uh, and made millions from her relationship with Shia. Now the case was delayed for a myriad of reasons, but Shia would go on a podcast in 2022 saying, I hurt that woman and in the process of doing that, I hurt many other people. He also says that he has a long list of people he needs to make amends to. Shia admitted to cheating on every single woman he's ever dated, never telling women up front that he has herpes type 1, and he admits to being an alcoholic and dealing with PTSD. He also says that he has a community of like 60 men. They hold these weekly hour-long Zoom calls and that, you know, they give him feedback in real time. Men will do everything but go to therapy. Shia is currently married. He has married actress Mia Goth. In 2015, they're in Germany and they're caught like publicly arguing. I don't want to touch you. I don't want to be aggressive. This is the kind of that makes a person abusive. I just want my dad to leave Now, the people filming this interaction is like a group of guys that actually end up giving Shia a ride to the airport. In the car, they film Shia saying, if I would have stayed there, I would have unalived her. Now, they would go get married in 2016 and in 2018, amid certain allegations of abuse, they actually separated. They reconciled in 2022 and she had a baby shortly thereafter. Shia says that in 2022, Mia also saved his life. Now, we are going to talk about the rest of Shia's violent history and his many, many, many arrests, but we are going to do that in part two. Now, if this part is up, part two is already up. I never make y'all wait for a part two. I always upload them together. So if this part is up, you can go to my page and find part two. It won't be in the comments. You have to like click on my profile and go. I promise it's juicy. It's really interesting still and you're gonna wanna watch it. Okay, we're back with part two of Shia LaBeouf's dark, dark past and allegations of abuse. Go to part one if you wanna learn more about the ongoing lawsuit he has with FKA Twigs. 
where she alleges that she was the victim of so much abuse at the hands of Shia LaBeouf. So before we get into it, y'all know I always say everything I'm about to say is alleged. I don't know him. I am just a bitch on the internet and this is all public information. So Shia's first arrest and actual first run-in with the law happened when he was nine years old for stealing. He would be arrested a couple times after that, but because he was a child, I don't even want to talk about that. Let's talk about everything that happened after he was a grown man. In 2007, Shia LaBeouf gets into a fight with his neighbor. He gets arrested. This same year, he also gets into it with a security guard at a Walgreens in Chicago. He was arrested that time too. In 2008, Shia would be arrested again after having like a car accident where his car ended up like rolling over. Luckily, nobody else was hurt, but he was arrested for drunk driving. In 2011, he was arrested after a bar fight. In 2014, while he was watching the musical Cabaret, Shia LaBeouf is arrested after he was like chain smoking cigarettes inside the theater and shouting really inappropriate things. Alan Cummings was actually starring in the musical and he actually slapped his butt too. After he was arrested, apparently he was telling the cops like, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? And he even spit on one of the officers and they ended up having to put like a spit guard on him. Part of Shia's plea deal was that he would go to rehab, which he did, and that he would stay out of trouble for the next six months and the court would dismiss and seal his case. Later on in the year, he was also caught on film trying to start a fight outside of a club. When he left the club, he was kicked out of a restaurant after he peed on the walls and then he chased a homeless man. Shia tried to steal his McDonald's, so he chased him down the street. 2015, he was arrested yet again, this time for public intoxication. This is also the same year that I talked about in part one where he's like yelling at Mia Goth in public in Germany, telling her that he doesn't want to touch her because he doesn't want to go to jail. He was also arrested after getting into it with like some cops and security guards at a nightclub. Apparently they tried to throw him out of the club and he got aggressive, he also threatened them, so he was charged with criminal trespass and disorderly conduct. In 2016 in Austin, Texas, he was arrested and charged yet again with public intoxication. In 2017, he was arrested at the anti-Trump art installation in Queens called He Will Not Divide Us. If y'all remember, this art installation ran from like 2017 to 2021. Apparently, he got into some sort of argument with another man. He grabbed that man by his scarf and he shoved him to the ground. If y'all remember, this art installation actually had like a 24-7 live stream that went on for the, all those four years. Um, but Shia LaBeouf's charges were dropped due to lack of evidence. In Savannah, Georgia, this same year, he was also arrested for disorderly conduct, public intoxication, and obstruction after he asked a stranger for a cigarette and they said no. This arrest at the time was actually a huge deal. It was all over the media because Shia also went on this like super racist rant against the black officer that was arresting him. He told the officer that because he was black, he was going to go to hell. He also told the officer that his job was only secured because he was black. He also said a bunch of other inappropriate things. He brought up the officer's wife, etc., etc. Of course, he would go on to apologize. He talked about how this was due to his ongoing substance use and that, you know, it was a new low for him and he was deeply ashamed of it. And you can't even make this stuff up. At an award show later on, when he was accepting an award for Honey Boy, in his speech, he thanked the officer and he thanked him for changing his life. Earlier this year, Shia LaBeouf actually talked about how he joined the Catholic Church. He received a ton of press um, and he actually announced plans to become a deacon. So maybe this is like Shia's like attempted redemption. I I'm not really sure. Now, there is no denying that Shia LaBeouf's childhood was actually super traumatic. Um, he was a victim to a lot of his dad's violent behavior, substance use. Um, and he was he was like a witness when his mom was raped. Right? He saw it happen. We can acknowledge that and we can be understanding as to the mechanism as to how he ended up being so reliant on substances and this like cycled behavior, right? What Shia gets absolutely no sympathy and no pass from me personally on is you cannot live a life of being a perpetual victim and then using that as your excuse to victimize other people. It's up to us as adults, as human beings, right, to work through that right you go to therapy you reach out to your community you ask for help you educate yourself on your behaviors um a lot of people have messed up childhoods and they don't end up doing damn near even a third of the stuff he did to the women in my last video and especially fka twigs shia labeouf was a millionaire at the age of 18 he has had every opportunity and every resource to get himself out of the mental place that he is in 
Anyway, that's all I have for y'all on Shia LaBeouf. Um, if you want to watch more celebrity videos, you can find a ton of them on my page. I am going to keep an eye out for this trial. It starts in October, so follow along if you want to stay updated. What's happening with LaBeouf now? Well, judging from Wikipedia, in April 2020, LaBeouf was set to star in Olivia Wilde's psychological thriller, Do Not Worry, Darling. Due to the obvious scheduling issues, Harry Styles took his position in September in 2020. Wilde later alleged that she fired LaBeouf because of his combative energy, argued with cast and crew before production began, including Florence Pugh, who expressed discomfort with LaBeouf's behavior. Oh, yes. However, LaBeouf denied being fired, claiming he left the picture owing to the lack of rehearsal time in August of 2020. In August 2022, Variety released a piece citing email Ford's address to Wilde refuting her firing claims as well as photographs of text messages and videos from Wilde in August 2020 urging LaBeouf to reconsider leaving the project. Oh yes. Representatives for Wilde and the studio declined to comment on LaBeouf's allegations and Wilde later told Variety Fair all I would say is he was replaced. That's what she say now. According to Vanity Fair, LaBeouf offered Wilde an ultimatum to pick between him or Puke, and Wilde chose Puke. So, I don't know who to believe. Well, best wishes to all the victims. This demonstrates that people are drastically different from the characters they play on television. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below on that note. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you get notifications for when I do post my videos. Love you all. See you all later. Bye.